What's up guys, Andrew Bainer here with Johnny Chardulo. We are going to be demoing his brand new Purple Grimace Boy. This is an Aristides <laughs> 080R, R. which stands for raw. raw. We'll get into the specs of this instrument in a little bit, but first we're going to show you guys what this sounds like in a... I guess we'll do the distorted rhythm tone first, since that's what I like the most. That's what we're going to do. This guitar seemed to drop E, and it sounds like this. Okay, so that was a really quick demo of what this thing sounds like with the distorted rhythm tone. Normally, as you guys know, I do like a full band mix, but this is kind of uh, impromptu, so we don't have that ready for you guys. So we're just going to be showing a couple different tones. But like I said earlier, let's talk about the specs of this instrument and a little bit of a story about how you got this guitar. So first and foremost, let's get the specs over with. Um, it's actually quite a simple spec'd out guitar. There's not too much going on here. Um, it's got hip shot locking tuners, hip shot bridge. Uh, hip shot knobs, which is just volume tone, through a pickup selector, um, stainless steel frets, and it has rechargeable batteries as well, which I did not know you could do with EMGs. Yeah, I think it's like a lithium ion battery that recharges. Yeah, I think it's literally just, like you said, a, I think it's a, just a rechargeable battery that they yeah. attach in there somehow. Honestly though, like I haven't played a guitar with uh, active pickups in a really long time. I've been a passive guy for a bit. And I was apprehensive about doing active because I fucking hate changing out batteries. I hate nine volts, but having a rechargeable thing with a micro USB plugins, mm -hmm. so yeah, that is, yeah. it's a uh, fantastic. Pretty and cool. EMG has been doing a pretty good job with their pickups the past few years. Yeah. So, so did you find out what pickups these are? Uh, I can't remember. We'll have to look it up. Okay. These are EMGs of some type that we'll put on the screen once we figure that out. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much all there is to it. So the difference between the raw series Aristides versus their standard ones is basically it means that there's no finish applied to this guitar. So essentially this purple color that you see is the actual material that this guitar is made out of. And in case you don't know, Aristides are not made out of wood at all. They're all done with something called injection molding where they actually invented their own material, which is called Arium. Um, and basically they just have this big mold that they pour this liquid into and it creates a guitar somehow. It resonates and it feels a lot like wood. Mm -hmm. It's not like, you're not playing like a plastic guitar, for yeah. example. It doesn't feel like, if you've ever played one of those crappy, like, um, what's the type of wood, or type of plastic? Acrylic? Like, yeah, acrylic. Yeah. It doesn't feel like an acrylic guitar. It feels and sounds and reacts the same way a wood guitar it should, which is what makes these guitars so popular, is even though they're not made out of wood, they still react like you would expect a guitar to react, basically. Yeah, another like good selling point to using guitars that are made of Arium or uh, Aristides is uh, when you tour and stuff like that, they are not affected by the weather. They don't, you know, bend and mold or do anything crazy. They mm -hmm. pretty much stay yeah. great. Like I flew with it from California and I had no issues with it after that at all, even though it's a short flight. But yeah, like but still, still, we're going from, you know, 20 degrees to five degrees yeah. and rain. Not affected by the weather whatsoever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that's pretty much it in terms of specs. So it's really like not too fancy of a guitar. This is definitely one of their like, I guess, I mean, it's still very expensive, but it's their quote unquote lower range of instruments. Um, and all of the raw series are slightly cheaper because the, you don't get a finish with it basically. But they've been coming out with new colors of the raw series. So mm -hmm. they basically inject the purple into the area mold instead of obviously doing the finish, right? So when they first came out, they had a small selection of colors and now they have a vast selection mm -hmm. like yeah. uh, the pink 080R. The neon pink one. The neon pink one. We can put a picture of that on the screen if you want. That one's super fucking awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a seafoam green one. Your favorite color. Yeah, my favorite um, color. <laughs> 
And I think they do the... Uh, there's black, there's, there's gray, there's I, white, maybe. I don't know if they do all of their models. Pascal, maybe tell us if we're wrong or not, but they do do the telly yeah, as the a new rod T as well. Zero. Yeah, mm -hmm. so... Yeah, so, um, but yeah, the, anyways, that's pretty much it in terms of specs. Um, yeah, I guess that's really... The next thing we should talk about is how you got this guitar and maybe like a little story about why you wanted one or anything that you think will be interesting right. about it. Initially, I I wanted to get a new guitar because I don't know if anybody who follows me knows, but I don't have a lot of sick gear. I don't really um, buy a lot of guitars or do, you know, the sell and trade like Andrew does with a lot of his stuff. I kind of buy one thing and I play the shit out of it. Um, not necessarily for like good looks or anything like that, but the functionality of a guitar is kind of just how I purchase my instruments. Uh, so I've had an RG8 for since 2014 and I mean I liked the you know what it did it did what I needed it to do. It had a DiMarzio deactivator in it that I bought from you uh, which obviously made a world of difference because the pickups in those are fucking shitty as hell. Um, <laughs> well spoken. Yeah but uh, so my goal from last year was I wanted to make uh, or I wanted to buy a really nice guitar with money that I made primarily only from streaming uh, revenue and my music, essentially. Um, a lot of it to do with uh, with Andrew and a lot mm -hmm. of the covers and stuff that we did and all of that. So that was my goal throughout the year. And I kind of, at a few points, was ready to buy other guitars. And then I was never really like satisfied with it because I only wanted to get Neuricities. I really wanted to you know, get a raw or like save up even more and uh, do it for longer and like do it custom. Uh, and then just kind of the right pieces fell together when we went to NAMM. Um, a good friend of ours, uh, William Rice or Bill, he uh, is really tight with uh, Aristides and the company, Pascal, all those Shout guys. Shout out to Bill. Indeed. Shout out to Bill. If without Bill, this none of this would have happened. Um, him and Pascal are obviously really tight and uh, Pascal is a, an amazing guy as well. He's um, a great businessman obviously he knows what he's doing but like personality wise and like he's very personal to talk to it's not like a very uh, intimidating we'll say um mm. the chats we had about you yeah. know getting this was was great and yeah. i pa felt by the way pascal is the owner of aristides just to put that out there in case you don't know yeah it was cool like when bill and i were talking to him and we uh you know we both purchased one he bought a, a raw as well 808 that's okay. like a, that's gray which is super cool 080. Um, Doesn't even know the model name of his fuck, own thing. Don't put that in. <laughs> <laughs> um, Bill got an 080. There you go. Raw series as well, <laughs> um, which is cool. It's great. It has uh, Seymour Duncans in it. Um, but like as soon as we kind of finalized it, I kind of felt like this is super corny, but I felt like I was like welcomed into a community of people who all own these guitars, and it was really cool. And uh, yeah, it's super thankful for Bill and Pascal. Um, but yeah, this is now my the nicest thing I've ever owned, and uh, I'm almost scared to play it sometimes. He left it here last night and said, everything I care about in the world is now in your house. Please lock your door. <laughs> the only thing he left here was just this guitar. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, so I guess really all that's left is we're just going to go and do a couple more demos, or rather Johnny's going to do some more demos, because it's his guitar, and uh, you guys will be in luck this time because he actually knows how to play clean and lead guitar, <laughs> which I don't. Okay, so first up, he's gonna do a another heavy rhythm tone again, just using the bridge pickup. Again, it's in drop E. It's using 10 to 74 strings. Sounds like this. Next up, we'll do some clean tones. Uh, so are you going to do the bridge pickup, middle pickup? What are you going to do um, here? I'll kind of just shift through all three. Um, like when I play clean stuff, I I know that you're just not about it. It drives me crazy. I really like using uh, the bridge pickup for clean stuff sometimes. Uh, like if you're into 
Tesseract or any of those guys, you know, a lot of their clean stuff is either bridge or uh, split between the mid and the bridge. Yeah. So it sounds like really snappy, yeah. which I like. Well, um, you never switch pickups. Like you always use the bridge. The only. reason why I never switched pickups is because my Imanez RG8 only had the deactivator oh, and the bridge and the neck pickup was a fridge magnet. So yeah. I didn't want to use well, it. Well, we're going to see what it sounds like today. We'll do then. both. So yeah. So you're starting with just the bridge then? Yeah, I'll just okay. bridge. is pretty cool. I like it. <laughs> okay, middle position. <laughs> cool. So that was, it's also really hard to capture on the camera, but um, the Arium really resonates loudly in the room. Like it, it doesn't sound like an acoustic guitar, but it resonates like, I, like you can hear the note ring off the body of the guitar a lot yeah. more than I can ever hear it on. I don't think any of my no, it's, is interesting. it's definitely a lot louder than if you were playing like a regular guitar made of like Swamp Ash or whatever. Yeah. Like you can really not only like hear it when you play it like that, but you can actually really feel it mm -hmm. resonate through the whole body, which I think is really great. Yeah. So like and it's all again with the injection molding, it's all just like one gigantic piece. Like it's not like it's different because it's not like a neck through or a set neck where it's like two pieces of wood that are joined together somehow. This is literally just one piece of area. It's honestly pretty yeah. crazy. Cool. Um, so now we move on to a lead tone, last and final thing. Okay, so I guess you're gonna do the bridge pickup first for the lead tone. Yeah. Johnny's favorite thing is bridge pickup leads. For some reason, it drives me crazy. I don't know, I think it sounds a lot snappier. I find there's time and place for all of that. And like for tapping stuff, it's always nice to go to your neck and get the clarity out of you know, every note that you tap, but I don't know, I just, I like uh, snappy stuff. I've never seen anyone else use a bridge pickup for a lead tone, but let's hear how it sounds. Whatever. Yeah, so the reason I like the neck pickup more for leads, which I think is why most people like it, is because there's actually less pick attack, which I think is what you like about the bridge. But the reason yeah. that I think that I usually prefer that is because I don't know. I usually I find like with with the sound that the pick makes touching the string on those high strings is usually kind of like this annoying like ice picking sound. And with the neck pickup, usually it kind of gets rid of a lot of that like super high frequency. So there's less pick attack, which is actually desirable uh, in my opinion, but I mean, yeah. they, everyone's different obviously. Just to talk about the pickups too. Um, I know like a lot of people are kind of not keen on EMGs, mm -hmm. but like I said before, they've been doing way better over the past few years. The X series is really awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. And these ones are great too. Like perfect 
like awesome for clean. Yeah, I have awesome the, for lead. I have the EMG 909 X's in this guitar. Um, I got them mostly out of necessity because there's no other nine string pickups basically. Um, but I really like them, and you know, I mean. EMGs have such a bad rep for some reason. I think honestly people just hate them because they're popular because there's really no other reason why. I mean, they still obviously sound good and clearly tons of bands and artists have used them for years because they sound good. So, yeah. you know, if they sounded like shit, I don't think any amount of marketing could fix that. No. And I think Pascal said as well when I got this from him that he spec this guitar out himself. So, I mean, I trust him when it comes to this kind of shit. So if he's putting EMGs in here, I mean, they do sound great with the guitar, like it's great for rhythm stuff, it's snappy. They're definitely naturally hotter pickups for sure. So if you're using a lot of high gain stuff, I would recommend rolling off, but um, I think in this guitar they suit it pretty pretty damn well. Yeah, sounds good. And again, the Meshuggah video that we dropped on Friday, if you haven't seen that, by the way, go check it out. It was all done tracking with this guitar. I know that it showed me playing my Ibanez and Johnny playing this, but that was just for the video's purpose. So actually everything in that video was recorded with this guitar. So if you want to hear what it sounds like in a full mix, that's actually a really good example of what this thing will sound like. Mm -hmm. um, and again, obviously go to Johnny's channel. He's going to have a couple of videos with this guitar uh, where you can also hear what it sounds like in a full mix. Um, but that's pretty much all for the video. So it's a little informal, quick and dirty uh, demo and not really a review, more of just like a demo of this guitar. The guitar's guitar. great. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. If you can obviously, get your hands on it. Uh, if you can get your hands on one, definitely, I'd say, bite the bullet and do it. Yeah, sure. they're great guitars for sure. Hopefully one day I'll get one, but we'll see. Um, but yeah, that's all. So thanks to Johnny for, you know, lending us the guitar and talking about it and all that. So again, if you guys want to see more of this guitar, go check out our Meshuggah video together, which is going to be on the screen. Or go check out Johnny's channel because it's his guitar. He's going to have tons of videos with it uh, over the course of forever my life because <laughs> johnny keeps things forever yeah um and i also want to give a big shout out to all the patreon supporters whose names are on the screen at this point in time hopefully not covering johnny's face in between us right about here or so uh if you guys are ever interested in getting audio downloads a shout out on the screen or stems you can find all that over on my patreon page which is linked in the description below that's all for today's video thank you guys so much for watching again go check out johnny's channel check out the links in the description we look forward to your comments, and we'll see you next time. I love you, Bill.